A very good morning, everyone. Welcome to Planet Sparks and Vision Possible event. I'm Li Ying, Planet Sparks MD. Thanks to the power of technology and invention of the internet, we are no longer constrained by geographical locales, nor are we at the complete mercy of a life-threatening virus to be able to digitally beam my address live to the computer monitors of our partners from Singapore to as far away as the US. To our partners who make time to join us from a different time zone, I am very glad to see you here. I would like to specially acknowledge and thank our community of ecosystem partners who are here today. Our principals, design and build partners, venture capitalists, and our customers. It is you and your extraordinary support in our innovation journey that makes this product launch possible. Without further ado, on behalf of Planet Spark and the team, I'm incredibly excited to host Planet Spark's very first digital product launch of our flagship PSX series single board computers. A technology platform that is specially designed to plug the hardware design gap and pushing the boundaries of what's possible in smart vision AI to bring the future of smart sustainable cities closer to us today. Our Planet Spark Innovation Center was launched in January this year. Our vision is to be a leading AIoT ecosystem platform connecting technopreneurs and innovations to reach markets. Be it with our principles in co-creating high-performance, low-system power AI technology platforms or empowering startups, companies and agencies to co-develop clean, green and smart solutions in the AIoT fields. At Planet Spark, we are constantly looking for ways to be a game changer in innovation and championing digital transformation to improve our data security, carbon footprint, health surveillance, lifestyles, and more. Together with our ecosystem partners, we can be a force for change tackling real-world problem statements that can make an impact. We have lined up an exciting program for you today. So let's get started. Our world is built on ideas, powered by connectivity, and ignited through understanding that sparks innovation in all of us. Nurturing the next digital revolution is what Planet Spark is all about. It is the first dedicated hardware accelerator in Singapore, bringing startups to the forefront of technology. With this new Planet Spark Innovation Centre and Programme Initiative, we see there will be a stronger collaboration effort. This excites me. In fact, I believe in this technology. Data is growing very fast, and in the near future, the demand for faster communication is needed. To have a sustainable advantage, we chose sensors that can operate in the invisible spectrum. Not only Planet Spark shares the same vision of the need of thermal sensors in the marketplace, they help us to connect with their customers, be it OEM or system integrators. Our goal is really to develop cutting edge computer vision technologies, build middleware using our software. There the possibilities are endless. Hardware is not an easy space to break into. Having uh, someone with extensive knowledge of hardware as a partner is very useful for us. For over 30 years, Excel Point has formed strategic partnerships with global semiconductor manufacturers, expanding its networks and regions. This makes Excel Point the best foundation for Panex Park to help startups to develop technologies and achieve commercialization. innovations to reach markets. Our flagship SBCs are specially designed for smart vision AI applications that require image detection, and we are very honoured to be able to develop the SBCs with our long-term principal, Xilinx. In the urban spaces, there are so many opportunities out there for smart AIoT solutions. Yet, there are just as many barriers in the hardware development space that we need to overcome before these solutions can go to market. Our SBCs are thoughtfully developed to plug the hardware design gap in order to make it as frictionless as possible 
for the commercial developers to bring their vision AI solutions to life. We would like to think of it as a super-powered industrial platform you need in order to be on the edge. I sincerely urge every audience listening in today to get curious about how your AI and IoT solution or technology can become more industrial and edge ready. At Planet Spark, we want to collaborate and bring your solutions to market. And through our platforms, this commercialization can be accelerated. With our SBCs, you don't need to be trained in mechanical engineering. You just need the right tools and the right development kit. Our SBCs are pre-installed with a Planet Spark exclusive middleware that we built together with our principal Xilinx. You will learn more about our Xilinx collaboration in one of the breakout sessions that I will speak more of later. For the theme-specific breakout rooms, which you have been assigned based on your interest during your registration, you can catch a preview and envision what the future of smart sustainability, smart buildings and smart health tech will look like. That is enabled by our SBC technology platform. First, let's talk about smart buildings. We can connect our sensor-enabled AI cameras to collect meaningful data and use them for access control, facial recognition, and visitor management systems. In addition, they can be used for vehicle traffic monitoring and car plate detection. As all the AI video inferencing is happening locally on the device itself, the risk of data security breaches are very low if you are using our SBC platform for collecting sensitive information. We have invited our friend Stephen Fong from Xilinx, who will share his thought leadership on this topic later in the first breakout room. Next, let's talk about smart sustainability. In Singapore and around the globe, we are all working towards a greener and more sustainable living, be it on the personal front, in homes, or in infrastructure. We have specially dedicated a smart sustainability session to help you envision how through our PSX SBCs, with its high performance and low system power, can help urban developers conserve precious energy and reduce our carbon footprint. We will be introducing our collaborators and startup partners to showcase a smart lamppost demonstration that will inspire you to make urban sustainability a reality. This is a collaboration with Fortizo as well as some of our startups. Lastly, let's touch on smart health tech. The past one year of living with COVID-19 has triggered a public health surveillance alarm and bring to the fore healthcare manpower issues and sharpened awareness of the aging population. This is why we have prepared a smart health tech session to address this topic where we look at our SBCs for use in conjunction with thermal imaging solutions, as well as smart wearables and public health social mapping applications. We have specially invited Yubun from Ambic Micro, an industry leader in ultra low power sensor technology to talk about smart wearables. We continue to see many opportunities and partnerships coming to life, and we are very excited to be a part of this journey. If any of you would like to know more about our PSX SBCs, please reach out to our Excel Point or Planet Spark website and Teams for more information. I hope you will enjoy today's program that we have prepared for you and learn more about our technologies in the subsequent breakout rooms. Thank you. And today I'm very excited, you know, to have uh, a number of uh, invited guests uh, who took time to join us uh, physically at uh, Planet Spark. So first of all, let me introduce uh, uh, Ms. Pui Ling, uh, who is the MD of uh, Planet Spark. Uh, Ling, let's say hi, you know, to the people. Hello. Uh, okay. Next, we actually have uh, Michael Cha. Michael Cha is the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Fortizo. Uh, Michael, can you say hi, hi to the people? Yeah. So, um, and next we actually have uh, Albert Chai. Uh, Albert Chai is the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Clock Technologies. Hello, my name is Albert. Yeah. And then uh, lastly, we also have uh, Joseph Chum, who is the uh, director of product marketing in uh, Excel Point, our parent company. Uh, he's actually in charge of the uh, product lines in Excel Point. Uh, he will share later, you know, uh, how Excel Point and Planet Spark uh, is collaborating. 
uh, in the platforms that we are doing and also uh, touch on our principles. Yeah, see? So according to UN, uh, a smart, sustainable city, okay, is an innovative city that uses uh, ICT, or short for Information Communication Technologies, and other means to improve quality of life, efficiency of urban operations and services, and competitiveness, while ensuring that it meets the needs of present and future generations with respect to economic, social, environmental, as well as cultural aspects. So here at Planet Spark, uh, we are constantly developing clean, green, and smart solutions without compromising about power efficiency uh, to power urban operations and services. So before we go in uh, to, to have a Q&A uh, session uh, with our panelists, I would, I would like to take a look at, uh, let's take a look at Michael's uh, company, Fotizo, okay? And what they are doing uh, on this area especially on the smart lamp poles, targeting uh, smart, sustainable cities. So let's see. At Fotizo, our vision of a smart sustainability solution is one that facilitates the best of partners' technologies with our unique iCore design. With many cities globally embarking on a mission to implement smart lighting with IoT and AI as an integral part of the system, iCore is developed to allow a seamless integration such that smartness does not compromise with the beauty of the space. iCore Smart Pole provides a robust infrastructure to implement smart sensing, connectivity, remote management on a unified IoT platform. It supports the various communication networks like 5G, 60 GHz wireless, MBIoT, and more. All these can be interconnected to form a robust backbone for smart cities and most importantly, a sustainable solution where current technology does not allow it to happen. Today, we are excited to join Excel Point and Planet Spark in the virtual launch of the Planet Sparks PSX4 and PSX7. This high performance edge computing solution plays an important role, not only because of its high performance capabilities, but also its low system power consumption. This helps smart sustainability cities achieve high performance benchmark and at the same time save precious electricity as well. Planet Spark has shown great foresight in choosing the iCore Smart IoT Pole as a hardware platform. As we can see, the partner mix have a complete edge to cloud framework, thus realizing the dream of having a unified platform that can integrate and communicate seamlessly. We are excited to partner Excel Point and Planet Spark. We believe this will bring our iCore Smart IoT Pole to the right level to meet problem statement commonly faced by smart cities implementation 
and will go on to power smart cities that are truly sustainable. Together, we can def achieve the dream of creating a clean, green and smart sustainable cities of the future. Thank you. Michael, for such a great uh, introduction uh, in the video. Yeah, before I begin, uh, for those who like to ask our panelists and speakers uh, questions, please use the chat box uh, in the, your uh, application or the Q&A section, okay? Uh, we'll try to address and answer this along the way or towards the end of the uh, session, okay? So remember to use uh, the chat box or the Q&A box, you know, to type in your questions. Now, since we are at uh, Planet Spark, okay, uh, let's begin by asking uh, Lee okay, about the story and motivation uh, about Planet Spark and how uh, we are tapping AIoT to power such sus smart sustainability uh, cities. Okay, uh, Lee? So I think uh, we have spoken a lot about Planet Spark and what the Innovation Center does. I think where we are at, we really look at building good platforms that can actually take different solutions and applications uh, quicker to market. And these platforms actually help any solutions and technologies to be on the edge. So I think when we look at sustainability, right, we look at net zero, we look at good monitoring, we look at big data, and all these require a lot of time to stream the data. So I think for us, when we design a platform, for example, some of the SBCs that you have heard about just now, um, the PSX series together with Xilinx and our other partners, I think where we are at is that we are not targeting it at a very specific or focused uh, application what we're trying to do is to allow the use of it being able to allow technologies to be on the edge. And this can cut across many applications. So for today, here we're talking more about sustainability. And that's why we have different partners, you know, the smart lamppost and also, um, you know, clock tech that we'll share more later about the wireless backhaul and how everything comes together to build an ecosystem. And I think um, it is very important for us to look at it from a collaborative perspective. And so we want to build that strong ecosystem of partners together because we actually see the value add of all these solutions coming together and um, you know, uh, new, new technologies, new innovations within the smart sustainability area. So for instance, if a company in agri-tech, in agriculture, actually wants to look at how you can use edge so imagine if you are a durian company or a fruit company and you want to detect you know, which fruit is defective before the robotic arm or your machine actually picks the fruit up. Where the edge comes in and the vision comes in is that they're able to then look at the fruit and tell that there are actually defects on the fruit and therefore they don't pick it up. Um, similarly, I think one of the companies that we work very close with, uh, one of the startups, Seven Cents, they are in the edge AI algorithms where we are actually co-developing a solution together with them that can be put in lifts of our HDB of our buildings and all these can actually detect anomalies. So for instance, sharp objects. Um, right now, you know, during COVID period, mask on, mask off. So all these surveillance and all these technologies make up how AIoT sustainable cities can actually look like. And I think this is where we're trying to bridge everything together and bring the solutions together. And lastly, I think commercialization is very, very important. And that's why we work very closely with our parent company, Excel Point, to actually look at bringing all these solutions, not just in Singapore, um, using Singapore as a test bit, but what we can do is actually to bring these solutions um, to markets such as China and uh, you know, Vietnam and many other countries that we operate in. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Ling, for sharing the vision and mission of uh, Planet Spark. Okay. and the ecosystem uh, needed. Okay. Can you share with us you know, how we can scale this ecosystem and bring about more innovative and uh, sustainable solution in the coming days? Well, I think you know, for us, we have worked with uh, many startups, many partners, many countries. And uh, most importantly, recently, we worked very closely with Enterprise Singapore, who has supported us through a lot of um, different projects. And a few of the bigger projects, I think one of which was uh, the India Smart City Consortium, as well as the Vietnam uh, Smart City Consortium that we are working on right now. Um, these actually allow us to bring our startups together, hunt together as a pack, and um, all these ecosystem partners can then come together to help 
um, fulfill some of the real life problem statements um, in these smart cities. So I think hunting and pet allows for startups to actually be exposed to what kind of projects there are in Vietnam, India, emerging markets that we operate in. So, um, you know, along with Fortizo, Cloptech and 18 other companies, actually we, are, we have just formed a smart um, city for Vietnam and we are looking at seeing how we can actually target some of the projects there. Besides working very closely with uh, such kind of government bodies, I think what we typically do is that uh, we also look at how we can achieve more test bidding um, by working with you know, um, uh, people like buildings, right, Capital Land, JTC. I think these are the people that we have actively been engaging to see how some of these technologies that comes up from our startup can actually go into such buildings. So aside from Singapore alone again, um, it, it would be great if after the test bidding, you know, we will be able to then deploy some of these solutions into these um, buildings across the countries that we operate in. And we do see quite a lot of exciting plans coming up um, that we can bring test bidding beyond. And lastly, I think we do collaborate a lot with IHLs. I think universities, uh, we always say that we want to start our, our students and our university students young and early to work on new projects. So our applications and our platforms are actually industrial ready. So this means that um, it allows you to actually develop a solution that can be plugged into a building, a lift, or, you know, in, into examples that I've talked about just now. Um, you know, for example, in this smart lamp post as well, you know, where we use our platforms. So what we're trying to do is that uh, we are engaging, and I think a lot of um, universities and IHLs to actually start using our platforms um, educate students and actually start them on projects early so that in future when they actually come out into the workspace they will be able to then um, uh, accelerate their solutions, deploy these solutions and commercialize their solutions um, very quickly. And I think again all these adds up together um, into how we can actually address you know, our target of wanting to build a smart sustainable city and also the green plan that, that will come you know, ahead. And I think many countries will then follow suit as well, um, using Singapore hopefully as a, as a test bedding ground and also as a very strong design house for such kind of technologies. Yeah. Thanks, Lee, for sharing you. You know, all this, uh, the scaling part of the uh, ecosystem. Uh, and we, as uh, the, doing the business development in uh, Planet Spark, we are excited to work with our Vietnam Smart City Consortium partners and also looking forward to the various uh, test bedding projects uh, with the agencies. So exciting times are coming. Yeah, but before I move on, I would still like to check in you know, with our audience and attendees who is with us. So if you have any questions, please, uh, for our speakers, please use the chat box or the Q&A uh, box below your screen okay, to type in your questions and uh, we will answer it along the way or towards the end of the session. Yeah. Now let's talk about the uh, smart lamp post. You have seen uh, Michael, you know, uh, talking about the smart lamp post. And today we are privileged to have uh, Michael Chia, uh, who is the uh, founder and CEO of Fertizo, uh, to, to, to join us. Michael, thanks for joining us today, you know, and sharing the smart lamp post in the video. Yeah, could you tell us more, you know, uh, I mean, you have been involved in so many smart city projects, okay? Uh, what is important? Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, thank you for inviting us here. Very privileged to be here. Yeah, so for the last couple of years, I think we have very interesting encounter when we speak to uh, the city planner, uh, councils, uh, architects, designer about how to implement smart city. And I think we could identify easily two key points, uh, one of which is uh, the need, and one of them is the one. Uh, well, let's go to one. So many cities will want to be the first to implement smart city. Uh, the desire to be number one is one of the motivation factor. However, after they have discovered this, then they get into the fine details of how to justify the investment into a smart city because it's not going to be a small sum, right? Then uh, the details, when we are adding out the details, then they find that, hey, Let's identify the needs, all right? So the needs will be, what do I need? Cameras, sensors, you know, uh, how to uh, implement for security purpose, uh, collecting data. And then a lot of, we also encounter a lot of 
uh, request for proposal. So that puts us into a mind as to we question ourselves, do we really know what we want for a smart city? In our first thought, we feel that, hmm, I think the city planner doesn't know what they want. But then, thereafter, after we refine our thoughts, we said, no, they know what they want. But they also want to know, when they ask for requests for proposal, what is coming up in the future. Because as we know, technology changes very fast. So if we don't know what is coming, then our infrastructure as we build will not be able to be future-proof. So that goes back to the one again. All right? when, we, when we identify the one, all right, I think what we desire is that we, we feel that a lot of emphasis is being placed on ROI. Is, is the cost of investment justifiable? Uh, you, know, you punch in the calculator, you find that, oh, uh, the return on investment will take a long time. Then uh, are we going to go ahead with the smart city? I think we should consider clearly that there is a big need for the, to address the global climate change. Today, you can see from the news, from the newspaper, from internet, you have forest fire, you have heavy flooding everywhere in the world. Closer to home, I think a couple of years ago, uh, our Prime Minister Lee Sen Long spoke about a hundred billion dollar investment in tackling rising sea water level in Singapore alone. At that time, I think many of us doesn't know what is hundred billion. <laughs> But today, uh, we know 100 billion is a one-year expenditure to support our industry because of COVID. So, I think uh, for my, my, my advice to both the city planner and everybody as stakeholders is that we need to clearly, when we want to identify smart city solution, we need to put in these two considerations, the need and the want together, mm. so that we have a holistic approach in this solution. Mm. Then you can find a sustainability point of view. Thanks, Joseph. Okay. Yeah, thanks for uh, sharing about the one and the needs, you know, uh, especially in the planning of uh, smart city. And now it's not just uh, smart, it has to be sustainable as well. Yeah, okay. Maybe, uh, Michael, could you elaborate more about some of the real technical challenges, you know, that we face uh, when we go, let's say, into a smart, sustainable city project? Yeah, okay. So uh, when we first introduce our product into the market, uh, our point is that we want to create a sustainable solution. And uh, that message seems to be very difficult to get into the mind of many city planners. Because I think essentially, uh, we need to realize that uh, the current poor technology really do not allow uh, the IoT world, uh, the, the, the cameras, the sensors to be, to be put in place. So it is, the current infrastructure doesn't allow that, so it becomes an afterthought. So when you want to put camera and sensors, you, you, you simply strap it on the current pole, pull the wire externally on the pole. So then when you want to change the device, uh, everything goes back to square one again. So the main part of it is that the infrastructure must be ready for the smart city deployment. So I feel that uh, I think a lot of emphasis need to put into the infrastructure to support smart city. The next point we are talking about will be uh, energy efficient devices that uh, we, uh, we need to emphasize. Uh, many times, uh, we only see light as an energy source. So many cities have today implemented changing of uh, uh, the LED street light from a conventional light source. Uh, that is a very simple uh, energy saving uh, uh, proposition. However, I think when we get into the technology world, I think the, the, the point is that we need to look at how we can save energy by having a sustainable solution using edge computing, uh, edge computer to transmit data and uh, manage the energy that we use so that it is efficient and sustainable. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, thanks, Michael. 
Yeah. So over here, uh, this is also the uh, official launch of uh, Planet Spark's uh, single board computer. Uh, so with the PSX series, uh, we hope to come up with uh, clean and green solutions, uh, especially you know, uh, working with uh, Fotizo uh, to uh, incorporate our uh, single board computers inside uh, the next generation smart lamp post. You know, thanks, Michael. You know, for your great insights over here, uh, we are very privileged to work with you to drive this uh, smart sustainability uh, movement. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. With that, my next question is for uh, Albert. Okay, Albert Chai, uh, founder CEO of uh, Clock Technologies. Yeah, Albert. You know, touching on wireless communications, five uh, G is a very hot trend. You know, uh, maybe could you share with us? You know, why five uh, G? or a strong wireless uh, backhaul is important in the uh, AIoT framework. All right, thank you, Joseph. And also, thank you very much, uh, Plan Xpark, for inviting me over for this event and sharing my view. Um, first of all, of course, the buzzword AIoT 5G is, is very commonly discussed today. Um, let's, let's touch about AIoT first. It, it consists of two big pillars, uh, as, you said, as the word is, implies. It consists of the AI technology, as well as the communication infrastructure, as well as the wireless communication technologies. So I'll probably touch more on the uh, wireless part. So coming, coming to 5G, I believe many of you have already seen the advertisement that's uh, shown. It promises you with uh, faster download speed, better user experience, gaming experience. I mean, all this in, in the cheese, it just uh, comes out to providing better network speed and latency bring the communication to the next level. So, as, uh, as always, when DAS is an enabling technology, there will always be new applications being developed. And of course, AIoT is one of them. Personally, I, I would say, um, I would like to see a hologram mm. to be a reality in the very near future. Uh, why I say, that, say so? Because uh, in this uh, post-pandemic uh, norm, I believe teleconferencing and telecommuting is, is pretty much part and puzzle of the, the business. And imagine if I, I'm here today um, speaking to you in this event, and where else I'm physically somewhere else. Isn't that something that hologram can do? And it can actually bring up a lot of productivity and bring a lot of convenience to people. That's what connecting people is about, right? And secondly, I think, uh, in my opinion, the 5G actually brings the opportunity or autonomous vehicle uh, closer to us. Um, because autonomous vehicle, again, in my opinion, is a very sophisticated AIoT platform. It has a lot of sensors, a lot of computing power. It's the next level of AIoT. And coming from a communication standpoint, I view AV also as a very good platform for future communication infrastructure. Why I say so? Because it's, if it's AV is everywhere on the street, it becomes a, a network, a very versatile network with its mobility. And it becomes a very good complement to existing infrastructure, which, bring, which will able to bring communication uh, to the next, again, uh, next level as well. So I, in my own words, I call this um, multi-dimensional system. Mm. Why I say that? Um, because in terms of sustainability, we can't just use a system for a single sole purpose. We have to start exploring a system that can serve multiple purposes to be sustainable. Right? Yeah. Thanks, Joseph. Thanks, yeah. So, yeah, you have joined, you know, uh, our Planet Spark's uh, acceleration program. Yeah. Can you share with us how you are working? How is Club Tech uh, working with Planet Spark? on tackling you know, this uh, communications uh, segment okay, in smart, sustainable cities. All right, first of all, um, as my company uh, name, Crop Technologies, it stands for connecting the lives of people. So the first key initiative that we work with Plan Expert as well as Fortizo is actually the smart lamp post. So uh, in the application of the AI video surveillance. So our responsibility is actually to provide a cost-effective data communication for the system. So when you look at data, actually recently, or rather yesterday, 
I do a quick search on the internet and I learn a new word, cotillion. Oh. Mm -hmm. So this is a word to describe a number that has 18 trillion zeros. And per day, we are looking at 2.5 quotidian uh, data being generated. It's huge. So that's what the big data is about. We are generating a lot of data. And I believe a big fraction of this data is generated from machine, the, the response via IoT, a deployment of IoT. So a question to ask is, then we are generating so much data, isn't it counterintuitive to sustainability? Why are we gen the data, carrying data and generating data needs energy? So I think my, my explanation is we have to work on the principle of the cost in exchange of the returns. So by generating data in a very systematic and responsible way, we can reap the benefits from this uh, uh, AIoT. So coming back, back to this, uh, how do we actually control it. I, I look at each computing, for example, designing a platform as a means of a floodgate to data. It, it has ability to differentiate between useful and non-useful data. Mm -hmm. And with that, it keeps the data generation in checks. And with that, again, boils down to we can balance the cost and benefit equation. Mm -hmm. So that's where um, I think uh, edge computing is timely. And we have to think about how we can generate data in a very useful manner rather than just placing sensors. Um, so I think uh, that's we see how we can further develop uh, this edge computing platform with Plan Okay. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, so much data is being uh, generated every day. Yeah, I mean, if you were to send, you know, the whole video, for example, video stream from uh, public uh, security camera, let's say back to the operation center, is going to clock up a lot of uh, bandwidth, you know? So that's why, you know, uh, together with our principals, uh, we have developed this uh, HAI platform. So instead of sending, you know, uh, the uh, whole video stream, uh, we can just uh, uh, perform the inferencing at the edge, you know, and only send metadata over, yeah. So, yeah, actually, uh, I've also invited, uh, so privileged to have uh, Joseph Chiam, Joseph Chiam is the uh, director of uh, product marketing in Excel Point. So I invited him today to share with us, you know, how Excel Point, our parent company, uh, is working with uh, Planet Spark, uh, especially uh, uh, over here. So uh, over to you, Joseph. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Joseph. Okay. So um, um, Planet Spark is 100% uh, 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 owned uh, by Excel Point. Well, we're privileged to be involved in this uh, event as well. Now, uh, looking at Excel Point itself, we are actually uh, distributing a uh, vast majority of uh, major product lines. So, key product lines by itself has good applications. However, in today's market, we will really see that uh, what they actually the customer wants is actually a solution. So, putting together, getting all these uh, application products together. Uh, with together with uh, uh, Planet Spark, they can actually create a solution and then we can actually uh, serve the market with these solutions. On the other hand, uh, it's also beneficial because um, Excel Point itself has a uh, distribution arm across uh, you know, Asia and then we can actually uh, distribute these products across to the markets and to the people. So this addresses both sides uh, and it's also real beneficial for us because that's a good design uh, and beneficial to Excel Point and also to Planet Spark. The more Planet Spark promotes the product, the more products we sell. Okay, thank yeah, you. Thanks, Joseph. Yeah. yeah. Actually, we have a question uh, that just came in. So the question is, uh, how do you foresee AIoT in the next uh, 10 years? Uh, will it be obsolete or moving on to the next level? Yeah, maybe uh, Joseph, you will, would you like to answer? Okay, yeah. um, I guess uh, data transmission is always, uh, you know, is moving forward and we see that there's a lot of um, uh, data sharing basically and 
we AIoT definitely will be something, or uh, the IoT definitely will be something that uh, people will actually be using, sharing a lot of data, collection of data, and be able to make uh, decisions above and uh, what you know before uh, things actually you know you can make a decision before you know uh, what you want to uh, 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 you know to move forward. Mm -hmm. So basically, that gives the uh, it cut short the number of uh, you know the expenditure from people, mm. okay, and then to deploy a system that is very efficient, okay, to the market. Okay, I think uh, what we also see uh, together with Excel Point is that this uh, AIoT is here to stay, you know, especially with uh, so many um, climate changes, uh, there is a need to deploy also uh, clean, green, and uh, smart solutions, you know, to power uh, through. Uh, sustainability okay uh, in our smart cities yeah okay yeah uh, well if you do have any questions uh, please continue to uh, type in the uh, chat box or in the Q&A box uh, in your application yeah uh, but we are almost at the end of our session uh, today okay before I go you know I want just want to share a quote uh, from Lee uh, founder of uh, Planet Spark okay uh, it takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a platform to scale and innovation. You know, we hope that uh, as we uh, form partnerships along the way uh, with Fortizo, you know, with uh, Club Technology, Seven Cents, uh, Meridian, Xilinx, you know, and uh, Qualcomm, you know, the global uh, semiconductor principles along the way, you know, in this whole AIoT framework, you know, uh, more and more innovative uh, solutions will come and drive this uh, smart sustainability uh, movement. Yeah. Uh, with that, you know, uh, okay, there are questions that are also uh, coming in. Uh, well, the question uh, from uh, Edo is, uh, what is the biggest challenge in uh, implementing a smart city? Okay, does the smart city technology support resilience at both personal and public scale? You know, uh, for the first question, what is the biggest challenge in implementing a smart city? Uh, I believe uh, just now Michael, you know, have mentioned uh, the one and the need. Uh, city planners need to take uh, note of, you know, what uh, they want to uh, uh, when they plan the smart city. You know, what do they want to achieve out of it? Okay, and the true uh, needs that is coming from there. Okay, uh, before we actually tackle, you know, at a uh, solution level. Yeah. Uh, am I right, you know, Michael? Uh, absolutely. I think, Joseph, uh, the point to hit home is that uh, the city planner must, as I mentioned again, create the basic infrastructure such that the, whatever solution you create today uh, can still be uh, useful for many years to come. Mm -hmm. And in the event when technology changes, uh, the new devices, new uh, web, uh, uh, platform is available. Uh, the, the infrastructure must still be valid, must still be relevant. It cannot be dated. Then you have a sustainable solution. Hmm. Okay, yeah. That's uh, important. Yeah, the, the second part of the question is talking about, you know, uh, does the smart city technology support uh, resilience? at both uh, personal and public scale. Yeah, what, what is your views on, on this one? Well, I, <laughs> this is a, a tough question, I think. Uh, well, I believe it will somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure really how resilient is the solution. It mm -hmm. depends on uh, the city planner. What sort of, uh, because when you come to s smart city, mm -hmm. I always ask how smart you want it to be. Because on, from the onset, you can do it like on a primary level, on a secondary level, or do you go f all the way to university level? Mm. That entails a lot of investment. So if you are talking about resilience, then what is the scale of your investment? Mm. How much are you prepared to do that? So if, you, if the city planner is prepared to go all the way, mm. then I think you have a very good, robust system. Mm -hmm. But if you say, ah, I just want to invest a little bit, let's wait and see what will come again, then 
I, th I think that will be a, 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 a very challenging situation whereby, uh, like I said again, return on investment, about how much you will get the return when you invest. So maybe the city planner should also take into an account as when you, when you calculate your ROI, when you punch your computer, you always think, uh, what's the energy saving, what is the benefit? But you should think of the intangible benefit. Like we speak again, global climate change. Yes. So that intangible benefit should be a factor that we should put into account. account. Yeah. Yes, Understood. I think that's what yeah. it should be. Okay. I think the resiliency uh, is very dependent, uh, not just on the planning side, but uh, the key changes that's happening uh, around us. Yeah, we see from the climate change, you know, and do, which is why we uh, started this uh, smart sustainability uh, movement, you know, together with our partners. And also referring to the other question, uh, AIoT is going to be here to stay, you know, as technology improves along the way. Uh, we are also looking forward to the day, you know, when the uh, performance and the power can be further improved, you know, in many ways and be a, a, a game changer uh, in the AIoT space. Which is why you know uh, this launch of the uh, Planet Spark PSX uh, Singapore computer uh, is an important uh, first step uh, for us, and together with our principals, you know, to help accelerate some of the uh, design cycles, and uh, from development to deployment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the sharing, uh, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are almost at the end of our session. Okay. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, thank you for joining us and our speakers you know, for the great insights and sharing today. I regret that uh, I'm unable to answer uh, uh, some of the questions that you may have, but do reach out to me at uh, joseph.lee at planetspark.io you know, uh, for a quick chat you know, on any collaboration opportunities uh, that you may have. Okay, thank you. It has been a pleasure being with all of you today, and thank you very much. On behalf of Excel Point and the Planet Spark leadership team, I really like to thank all of you for taking time in your busy schedule to participate in this virtual product launch of the Planet Spark flagship SBCs. And a big shout out to our speakers, invited principals, startup partners for sharing their valuable insights and thought leadership that truly sparked our imagination helping us to envision so many possible ways and opportunities that our SBCs can be used for powering the future of smart, sustainable cities. If any of you would like to know more about our flagship SBCs or are interested in being an ecosystem partner, please reach out to us on our Planet Spark or Excel Point website for more information. We look forward to collaborating with all of you and seeing you again for future events. Thank you.